Welcome back to the Medical and Dental channel. In this video, we'll be talking about what your cervical screening test results actually mean. We'll explain what to do if your cervical screening test results come back as abnormal. Here is a flowchart we created to help you understand the most likely pathway for each cervical screening test result. Cervical screening tests look for the presence of high-risk HPV infections. Once your doctor has taken a sample from your cervix, it is sent off to the laboratory and the lab will analyse the results to determine whether the following HPV types have been detected. HPV 16, HPV 18, HPV not 16 or 18. There are essentially four different results that you can have. HPV not detected, HPV 16 detected, HPV 18 detected, or HPV not 16 or 18 detected. Your results will look something like this. This is your risk of developing cervical cancer. These are your test results, and this is the recommendation. Let's talk about these results one by one. Test result example one, HPV not detected. If HPV 16, HPV 18 and HPV not 16 or 18 are not detected in your cervical screening test, this means that on that occasion when you had your test, HPV 16, 18 and a group of other high risk HPV types were not detected in your cervical screening test. Your doctor will most likely then recommend that you have your next cervical screening test in five years time. So what do you do if one of the high-risk HPV types are detected in your cervical screening test? If either HPV 16 or HPV 18 are detected on your cervical screening test, this means that you have one of the high-risk HPV types that can lead to cervical cancer. HPV 16 and HPV 18 have been shown to cause about 70% of cervical cancers. These HPV types are more likely to progress to cervical cancer than any other cancer-causing HPV type. So if HPV 16 or 18 are detected in your cervical screening test, it is extremely important that you follow this up with your doctor. Your doctor will most likely refer you to a gynecologist who is a specialist in women's health for another more specific test called a colposcopy. A colposcopy involves an instrument called a colposcope, which looks a bit like a microscope, which the gynecologist will use to look at the cervical cells in more detail. This test is usually performed in the consulting room with you positioned in a similar way to a cervical screening test. During a colposcopy, your gynecologist may apply a vinegar-like liquid or iodine to your cervix to make it easier to see abnormal cells through the colposcope. If you are found to have abnormal cells during a colposcopy, there are different treatments that your gynecologist may recommend to remove the abnormal cells from your cervix. By removing the abnormal cells, this will prevent these cells from developing into cervical cancer. It is very important to treat precancerous and cancerous cells early and to have close follow-up with your doctor after you receive any treatment for abnormal cervical cells. What if HPV not 16 or 18 is detected? If HPV not 16 or 18 is detected in your cervical screening test, you have one of the other high-risk HPV types, which is not HPV 16 or 18, that can lead to cervical cancer. For this reason, the lab will automatically perform another test called a liquid-based cytology test on the same sample as the HPV test. A liquid-based cytology test will determine whether any cervical cell abnormalities are present. Mm. There are three possible outcomes of the liquid-based cytology test. Negative, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. If your liquid-based cytology test is negative, meaning there are no abnormal changes to your cervical cells, this means that although you have one of the high-risk HPV infections, the infection has not yet caused any abnormal changes to your cervical cells. Remember that most of the time your own immune system will be able to fight off an HPV infection without any treatment. So in this instance, it's likely that your doctor will recommend that you have a repeat cervical screening test in 12 months time to give your body a chance to fight off the HPV infection over the next 12 months. If, however, after 12 months, your next cervical screening test detects the presence of HPV not 16 or 18 again, this means that for some reason, your body has not been able to fight off the infection itself. 
This means that the HPV infection has persisted and if left untreated, there is a higher chance for the infection to cause abnormal cells that can later lead to cervical cancer. Therefore, if you have persistent high-risk HPV infection, your doctor will refer you to a gynecologist for a colposcopy. If your liquid-based cytology test shows low-grade cervical cell changes, your doctor will likely recommend repeating your cervical screening test again in 12 months' time. If, however, after 12 months, your next cervical screening test detects the presence of HPV not 16 or 18 again, if you have persistent high-risk HPV infection, your doctor will refer you to a gynecologist for a colposcopy. If your liquid-based cytology test shows high-grade cervical cell changes, this means that the HPV infection has caused high-grade abnormal changes to your cervical cells. You are therefore at higher risk of cervical cancer. In this instance, your doctor will refer you to a gynaecologist urgently for a colposcopy and further management. On average, it takes about 10 to 15 years for an HPV infection to develop into cervical cancer. So as long as you keep up to date with your cervical screening tests and follow up with your doctor if you have any abnormal results, this will reduce your risk of cervical cancer. And that brings us to the end of our cervical screening series. In our previous videos, we highlighted the importance of HPV vaccination and other strategies to reduce the risk of HPV infection. And we also highlighted the importance of regular cervical screening tests to prevent HPV from developing into cervical cancer. You can find those videos linked below. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, please let us know in the comments below. And did you enjoy this series? We appreciate any feedback because this information is for you, so just let us know. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and learnt something new. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date with our uploads. And remember, a healthy mind and a healthy body lead to a healthy and happy life. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.